Hey guys, what do you see? You see Burl Pine, but not me. I'm trying to set the phone up. Okay, hey, <coughs> this is called Burl Pine. <coughs> I'll do a better shot in a minute, but what I want to show you is, believe it or not, $72 a square foot. That's before you go ahead and clean it up. This was actually painted at one time with thick paint, and you couldn't tell that that was there. But the reason I brought you here, by the way, while well, you can see, since I'm not in jail, mm. hemp oil. Can you see this? This is made by a company I like to use, milk paint. It's called the RealMilkPaint.com company, and it's hemp oil. So not only can you smoke um, pop, and hemp is good, one of the most industrial products you can have. You can make alcohol and all sorts of but this oil. It doesn't need a thinner like other oils, like tongue oil and um, I also tended to use, uh, um, well, I, I didn't like linseed oil much, it's too sticky. So I used walnut oil, which is really nice and sweet, but hemp oil doesn't have to have a thinner. And the thinner is what I was trying to get away from, having to add thinners and stuff. So, watch what happens when I take some of this and put it on this wood. Honestly, this is amazing wood to start with. But what makes it so amazing? In case you can't see, do you ever watch Emerald Live that cook on, watch. As you see this, I gotta soak this up. This old t-shirt. Never get never waste an old t-shirt. This is just adding oil because it's been dried out. Because I got it on my back porch and I was using it as a partial wall. Now as this oil soaks in, you're gonna see this amazing color come out. This is longleaf pine. Now longleaf pine, besides being an amazing wood, is the hardest of the 77 species of pine that grew in the United States. Back in the early days, this is like 1800s, 1700s, and these were massive forests. And these forests had trees in them, like the longleaf pine, that had been alive. This tree had to be alive to develop the heart. People say heart pine. That's a portion of the tree. It had to be alive over 180 years before it started to develop the heart. Now the heart of the tree would then be the structure, the hardest part, and that tree would then grow on to be 130, 140 feet tall, four foot or more in girth, in diameter. So as that tree grew taller and taller and taller, it would shed its branches. And all these lower branches, as they came off, what would happen is the nubs would then grow over. Now sometimes it was fire, sometimes it was a um, just the shedding of the branches, maybe a really big freeze, and as it grew up, it would shed the bottom branches. So these trees are notable for not having a branch bottom 50, 60 feet, just all tree going up. Now you can imagine, maybe nobody really can, but the forest in East Texas, 1830, 1830, were so thick, 5,000 square miles, so thick with these trees, that you could drive wagons through them and there was no underbrush. Now what made a longleaf pine tree so unusual, one of the things is that the needles were over one foot long. One foot long. This is about 11 inch panel. So the needles on the tree were that long. The pine cones from the tree, believe it or not, were over two feet long, which is almost that panel. Oh. Anybody there? Hey, I just knocked y'all off. And, oops. Oh, hey, look at that. Oh, how about this? Sorry, guys. You can tell I got your balance. If anybody's watching, I didn't even know if anybody's watching. But I want to invite y'all just to see, because this wood, if you run into it, and you find some of it, and you go, wow, look at this, isn't this crazy looking grain? This is some of the rarest of the rare grain that you can get out of a tree. And especially along these pine trees, because you might be cutting a board up, and you might say, oh, look, there's a knot in the board, and not pay much attention to it. But an inch and a half away, that knot disappears, and this is the last remnants of the knots, or the pearls on the tree, and then the tree goes back to being regular grain, just like this again. And then, unfortunately, 
Um, most of this beautiful stuff doesn't get spotted. In the older days, it wasn't as big of a deal because wood was so common. But then later on, the wood now, you can't find a tree like that, A. If you can't find it, um, you're not allowed to, you don't want to cut it down. If it's, if it's a thousand years old or 1500 years old and it's in a national forest, they let them cut it down instead of saving these trees. So all this has mostly been harvested. Now you notice on the side, that's a thinner, lighter grain. Okay, and one of the things characteristic of this is really tight grain. So you think, like some places, that's only on one small section. Now this is an upside down door. I don't know if you can see all up top. I put it this way because the, the wider portion is supposed to be at the bottom normally, but I want to see it, so I put it at the top. And even on that, look at the color, and this is going to stay in there, and that's applying, again, hemp oil. Now how long did that take? Not very long. What you normally would do is just soak it. So this isn't even all you put on it. That's the first soaking because it didn't soak it all in. And so you come back again and normally for 20 minutes you would keep it wet. If it stays wet it keeps sucking it up, put more on there. Now see why? Look at the color and see how it comes out each time I add a little bit more oil. Now why is that? Part of it is the physics of light. As this absorbs more oil, it then can hold more light, and what you get back, and as a result, is more color because there's less reflection of light. It's holding more and reflecting less, absorbing, and now you're seeing the color come out. So, what you want to do is fill this normally with so much oil that it, after this oil starts setting up, you wait about 20 minutes soaking it, getting it wet. You can see I just want to soak it. You can see how it just drinks it. This is just one side. The other side is really dry. <coughs> it's not going to go over there all that next so it doesn't crack. But as you see this soak up the oil, what's so important about this little lesson is that that's hardly even enough oil yet. But then look at the other side. Oh, yes, let me call him. I can't talk to him right now. So, see this? Look at how plain that looks. You can barely see the grain. Isn't that crazy? But, all you do is add that oil, and that wood, $72 a square foot. You start going, oh, huh, what? That's what I did. So, I was about to sell a whole bunch of this, start investigating again, because it's been a long time since I did this. I've been mothballing all my stuff for many years. So, I'm going to sell some of it. And as I was looking at the pricing on it, I'm going, hmm, what's it like these days? It's kind of like Rip Van Winkle coming back from having been into a deep sleep. Turns out we're not getting a lot more of this stuff because nobody's growing any more of these trees. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? This is so dry. I'm just pouring this into this rag and it's just sucking it right out of the rag. And my t-shirt, old t-shirt. Remember, cotton has many lives. And then out of that what looks like so bland all blonde the color comes out now that color is by the way that is the sap now one of the things about longleaf pine trees is it had the highest one of the highest sap contents you can get it is the it's probably it is the hardest of the 77 species of pine and it actually has a hardness especially burled nearly the equivalent of the hardest oaks you can buy and so that is it's serious, serious uh, uh, strength to take hits and not get marked, not get scratched. But also, look at the width of these panels. And these are single pieces of board. These are not plywood. These are not uh, glue together, which is typically what you see. These are single pieces, which means the board had to be probably 14 inches across by the time they squared it up, cut the beveled edges and planed of course, planed it. And those boards are extra thin compared to normal boards because the way the door is put together, there's a little groove right up in here and a groove in here all the way around and that's what holds that panel in there. So that panel is actually, oh, probably another half inch bigger than what you're seeing. Now you see in the middle, looks like almost no grain until you put some um, oil on there. 
and then the green comes out again. Right? Look at the color. It will look like nothing. I need to set one on both that later, but this is so you can see it and uh, and watch the magic. Now, I know everybody can't watch too much. You got to go, but I want y'all to see and appreciate that an old old piece of wood you might find. And this is the crazy part. You might find this wood on the back of a painted board. This remember, this door was completely painted when I when I bought it a long time ago. And we were stripping stuff, and they stripped this door, and I saw those panels, and they were about to let this door go away. It's like a regular old strip door. And I grabbed this door, and that was 20 years ago. And I saved this door for 20 years. Now back then, you might have bought this door for 50 bucks. You might have bought this door with that paint on it. I probably bought it for $15. But that was 25 years ago. You probably weren't born, most of these people. But that one panel is worth $150. $150. $150. So if you turn that sideways to make that the headboard of your bed, guess what? Nobody else is going to have a headboard like it. What do you think? Imagine that's a headboard. You go to bed at night or you're over your bed. What I like to do on these is you put it up as your ceiling. I call them my adorable ceilings. So this is what's over the top of your bed. So you can see it at night and you're, this you hang on the ceiling. And you put a little beam around it. And if you want, then you have a little light in it. And that's your hanging from the ceiling from four screws. In your condo, your apartment. It doesn't matter when you leave. Are you going to leave it in the house? Oh, hey, I don't know. So if you attach it, you just put some screws in the ceiling and then they go through to the 2 by 4s You got to find the 2 by 4 in the ceiling on the rafters. And don't tell anybody because they'll say, no, you can't do that. And then when you leave, you pull that out and you get some toothpaste. And you put the toothpaste in the hole in the ceiling. And you put the toothpaste wherever you put a hole and cover it up. And it looks just like the paint or the texture they got on the wall on the shit rock that's usually on the walls. So that way you can go ahead and have something beautiful like this. That's one cool thing to do with it. Now, I'm going to go to another cool thing to do with it, guys. I sleep on a bed that floats on ropes. And I love it. I love it. So I have a futon mattress on top of it. Now, imagine a futon mattress for twin bed, roughly 40 inches. So if you take something like this. And, oh. Hey, guys. Yeah. We there? Oops. Right now I keep knocking everybody over. Rock and roll. Hey, Mulag. Hello, hello. Christine, hello, hello. Lori, hello. Um, I'm going to finish this up real quick. I close up before I drop it on the floor again, if I can do that. And um, so, what do you think of my $50 door, guys? That would have been a $50 door under paint. So, we strip the paint off and add hemp oil. This is hemp oil. Like, as you grow, if it were legal, all over Texas is a weed, and it produces this oil. It produces an oil that you can burn in a car for fuel. It produces an oil and a fiber that Henry Ford actually designed a car around was hemp. 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 You wouldn't imagine I have an affinity for hemp, would you? Um, but honestly, when you see the many things you can do with just hemp oil, I could have hemp for my sails on my ship, like they did to get to America. I could have hemp for the rope that we used in World War I and World War II. That the, I have paperwork that shows that the U.S. Army, or excuse me, the Department of War, that they uh, asked everybody to grow hemp. And they did, all the way through Oklahoma and everywhere else. And because of that, the sheriff of Chickasha, Oklahoma, was able to go ahead, the sheriff, was able to go ahead and make maps that showed where the old hemp fields were, because it still grew wild, it's a weed. And then people like dumb kids go out there and pick it and get busted for picking hemp, which couldn't get a Boy Scout high, no THC, but it was illegal. And so that sheriff was corrupt as heck, would trap people and trap them out in that field thinking they're just going out there to get themselves some free hemp. Nothing's free in life, kids. How do I know that story? I was one of those kids. 
accidentally went there. Nearly didn't leave. That was the end of the, the Clinton era, when you had to have reasonable cause instead of suspicion to inspect your home, which I was living in a bus. And they didn't see me go in there and pick the hemp, but they stopped me and they ended up busting me for it. I was facing, believe it or not, for less than a pound dried out of hemp, six years in the penitentiary of Oklahoma. In 1983, 82. Luckily I got off. I didn't have to, they, they, the judge determined the last week before Clinton changed the law, he changed it from reasonable cause to suspicion. They did not have reasonable cause to search my home on wheels and therefore I got off. A week later, they would have had the right to take my home and put me in the penitentiary over that hemp because they just had a suspicion that I had it in the vehicle because I was parked next to the place that it happened to be. They just never saw me there. So, that's your story on why hemp is a good thing because it makes so much of a difference. It's an industrial product. Now, mind you, by the way, this rag is now soaked with hemp oil. If I leave it all wadded up on a hot day, which none of you are going to see up north, but today, a hot day, say it's 85 degrees, 90 degrees, 100 degrees. If I leave this out like this wadded up, these oils, when they pulmerize, create heat. I almost burned my school bus down one time because I left one in there and it had tongue oil. As it heats up, if there's a breeze blowing, it will self-combust and it will cause a fire. This rag with oil in it causes the burn and the destruction of more artist labs and, and, and shops and furniture places than any other single thing that you have seen burned down a building using oils to do this with. So when you get done and you just say, oh heck, okay, I'll be back later, I'll just throw it down there. I did that. And I kept coming back, I was dumpster diving in Las Vegas, and I was living in a school bus, I came back, my eyes were all accurate, and I was like, wow, what's burning in here? It's like, wow, this stuff must really be strong. And I left again, I came back. The next time it was even stronger. And so as I was leaving, I saw a can, I saw the rag next to my plastic TV, and I picked it, as I picked it up, it burst into flames. And I threw it out the door as a comet, flaming out the door. They didn't have the label on there. But please, these labels, before they wear off, they'll say somewhere on there, when you're done, this is so important, when you're done, take this outside, put it in water, soak it in water at least, and then, if you're going to take it out, lay it out so that it's going to dry out, flat on something. Because otherwise, this can burst into flames if it's left like this and not rinsed out. Make it clear, that's the most important part of this whole video. And I should say in the beginning, watch that, because to the end, because this nearly cost me my bus, and I was a bit homeless, as it was, I was living in a school bus, I would have had nothing left if I hadn't seen that in between dumpster driving. I came in to get water, and I saw that, and it just caught my eye, I saw a wisp of smoke. That was my third time in, my third chance. And as I was walking out the door, I saw it and grabbed it, and luckily the door was open because it burst into flames in my hand. The, the side of the TV was melted. The top of the, the, the table, it was a wooden table, had a black burn in it this big around. Where it already burned in the table, burned in the side of that, and it's still just smoldering, waiting for a breeze. So, that's how dangerous that rag is. Hemp oil, tongue oil, um, walnut oil, linseed oil. Any of those oils pulmerize and heat up, and that can burst into flames. Thank you, thank you, and because I still am here, because thank you. I learned this lesson, and the time it was not on the label, and a lot of labels don't have it on there. It will self-combust. Please, share that. Share that. Have a great day.